Hall of Fame professional speaker, author, and global traveler, George Walther speaks from experience, combining tales from his adventures in 99 countries with decades of practical business expertise. Audiences love hearing George's motivating messages because they inspire creativity and generate breakthroughs, and they're fun to hear. Gee, sometimes wake-up calls come just when you don't want them. Sometimes an alarm goes off, and it might just be wake up, the day is starting. It might be coming to a convocation to remind us that it's the start of a new year. Or it might be something more dramatic. Have you had a wake up call? I have. I had a wake up call 12 years ago. I had just earned my private pilot's license. I was all excited. I was going to be a pilot. And I donated a flight to a charity auction, the Starlight Foundation, that aids critically ill kids. And a few days later, I got a phone call. Hello, George. My name is Pete, and I just had to win that prize. He wanted to propose to his girlfriend. I said, gosh, that sounds really romantic, and it sounds like an unforgettable adventure for sure. Absolutely. Let's do it. Off we went. And it was a perfect day for flying. And as we approached Roche Harbor on the specific island where he wanted to do his proposal, flying conditions were perfect. And as a conscientious pilot, of course, I went through my pre-landing checklist, you know, flaps 10 degrees, fuel mixture rich, radio frequency set. And then something that wasn't on my checklist. I heard a voice. I heard a voice saying, Something's not right, change airports, don't land there. And then I heard a second voice. And the second voice said, what are you, chicken? You've landed here before, they're gonna think you're scared. Land the plane. You know, and for a minute I did consider changing. I thought, how would I put this? Uh, Pete, don't worry about a thing. The weather's great, the plane's perfect, I feel wonderful. I did want to let you know, I am hearing voices in my head. <laughs> So we proceeded in for landing. I decided to ignore that voice. And just short of the runway, wind shear. Now wind shear is a vertical wind. You can't see it. There's nothing you can do about it. But suddenly the plane drops down. Now if you're flying along at 33,000 feet and the plane drops 50 feet, your coffee cup jiggles a little bit. It's no big deal. However, if you're not at 33,000 feet, if you're at 33 feet and you drop 50 feet, <laughs> It's a big deal. So suddenly, the plane bashed down on the ground. The wings didn't break off. It wasn't catastrophic in that sense. But I kept the plane going straight. I held on and everything was going great until I saw the ditch. <laughs> and the front landing gear of the plane dropped down in the ditch, sheared off the bottom of the plane. And when that happens, you have no control at all. So we slid down the runway. And as a conscientious pilot, I'd make sure that my fuel tanks were completely full. And so, <laughs> and so I started to smell fuel spilling out. And when the plane came to a stop and we sat back and thought, oh, we've survived. <laughs> Smoke. I ran from the plane. Pete followed the exact safety instructions I had given him and pulled Gene out of the plane. We ran from the plane, stood back, and watched it burn, grateful that we had survived this wake-up call. And then I thought, oh gosh, I've survived the crash, but now the real hell begins for me. This guy's an attorney. He's going to sue my butt for sure. I can see it coming now. Emotional distress, surely. Um, let's see, alienation of affection from his girlfriend. Interruption of his engagement. Okay, probably dry cleaning for his pants. <laughs> But he better not go for misrepresentation, because that auctioneer clearly said this would be an unforgettable experience. <laughs> I went to the wedding, and I'll tell you, the first picture in their wedding album is pretty impressive. <laughs> that is the Cessna 182 that we were in that day. No injuries, not a scratch. But what a wake-up call. Everybody says they customize. I tell you what I do. I love to phone your audience members in advance and interview some of them, bring their specific scenarios and terminology into the presentation, so that at the end of my talk, I don't want people walking away saying, boy, was he a good speaker. What a great canned speech. I want them to leave saying, did he used to work in our industry? When you leave this convocation today, 
If you get in your car, it'll be so tempting to turn on the radio and go to the same station you listen to all the time to hear the same music you're used to, to hear the same traffic reports. Instead, there is one button on your car's dashboard that will literally grow your brain. It's uh, labeled with a four-letter word. What's the name of the button? Seek and scan, I heard, absolutely. If you get in your car and press that seek button, your radio jumps ahead to the next strong station and your brain starts talking. And your brain says, opera, I'm not used to opera. I don't like opera. I don't have neural pathways carved to handle this kind of music. <laughs> so, and we all know the recent studies of the brain have shown that you can actually literally inoculate yourself against early Alzheimer's and other brain diseases by exercising it just as you do your body. When you subject your brain to music that it's not accustomed to, it gets to work. And it, the axons and the dendrites start firing off and go, gee, we'll have to make some new neural connection. Ooh, ooh, rap. I'm not used to rap. I'm going to have to grow new connections. Ooh, ooh country. Oh no, if those two get mixed up, it's crap. <laughs> Don't listen to the same station. Keep pressing the seek button. Make yourself listen to a couple of songs, even if you hate them, knowing that what you're doing is nourishing your brain with new experiences so that... I love using my head on stage, and that's why I've been presenting hardcore business seminars for years. My works are published around the world, always with sales, service, communication, leadership, specific actionable techniques people are gonna put right to work. There's one thing I like even better, though, and that's using my heart on stage. That's why so many of my clients ask me to keynote their event with a motivational, inspiring message that moves people and combine that with a solid business content nuts and bolts seminar. So those three lessons, the three voice lessons, are so important and easy to put into practice. First, send your message. Speak up with passion. Let those people who you want to serve know that you are enthusiastic about working on their behalf. Seek your adventures. Be fresh. Take a different way to the office. Shift your perspective. Savor your relationships. Life is far too short. Remember those two voices. There's always one that says, oh no, I better hold back. I better not speak up. I might say it wrong. They might take it wrong. I might not do a perfect job. There's always that voice saying, oh well, it's so comfortable doing things the way I've always done them. I mean, this is I was trained, this is the way I seek listings, I'll do it that way. There's always that voice saying, well, I'm awfully busy, I don't have time. You know, it's interesting, when I mention the ritual I have with my wife about uh, writing in our journals, typically women go, what a great idea. That, that would be so wonderful in our marriage. Guys say, that's gonna take like an hour a month. What? I don't have that kind of time. Tell those voices to shut up. Tune in to the voice that says, I can help this client. I'm gonna let them know what I can do to serve them better than any other realtor in the area. Listen to that voice that says, I wanna do things in a fresh, different, unusual way. Listen to that voice that says, there is nothing more important in your real estate profession or in your life. Nothing gives you a better return on investment than savoring your relationships. What do you need? A wake-up call? There it is. Thank you. Yeah, there's no question about it. Business credentials are important, and having an MBA and books published around the world, that's important. But I think your audience cares even more to be addressed by a speaker who's actually been around in life. Well, after traveling in more than 99 countries now and raising a daughter on my own single-handedly as a custodial parent and balancing the same life-work pressures that everybody in your audience deals with, I bring that life experience to your stage. And that's why my company is named Speaking From Experience. I'd love to share it with you.